Hello everyone, it's Matt here and welcome to the June vlog. Now obviously in last month, which was May, I kind of said that I doubt there'd be enough content to fill up a monthly vlog and make it worthwhile doing. But for some reason June seems to be the month that everything's turned upside down in the uh, Lego train world. The first uh, order of business is obviously the Lego Crocodile release. Now this is something that when I did the May vlog was completely unknown to everyone. Um, from the LEGO community as far as I can gather and within that month we've had some uh, prelim images leaked um, very low res uh, then we've had a Swedish shop post about it and then we've actually had the public uh, announcement from LEGO um, so it's a, re a reasonably nice model um, it's not perfect um, there's also been a lot of compromises um, to make it fit around standard LEGO track um, so it's very a pivoted model it's not um, as it would be in real life and um, obviously that kind of works in lego's favor because obviously then they can stick the new powered up equipment all in the central unit so it saves having to run wires and all that sort of stuff um details wise it's got quite a good level of detail but with regards to detail um as been mentioned on the euro bricks thread for the uh, crocodile set is that it's a ce3 with pieces from the CE2 uh, or the CE6-82 um, there's very differences between the two um, the biggest one seems to be as far as I can gather uh, the grills in the nose and the door configuration so on the C on the C-83 you have one in the side and one on the corner of the cab whereas the CE2 has them where they are on the model so also there's been some compromises and tweaks there um, and obviously there's different arrangements in the bonnets, but it looks to be that Lego is based on the CE3 with bits from the CE2 to sort of backfill where they couldn't really do it for a 3. Um, that comes out on the 1st of July uh, for a reasonably good UK price of £90. It's comparable prices in, Euro in euros and dollars. Obviously I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because obviously... You'll, there's other places to go for that like brick set um, pretty much all the other fan, t fan types will have covered it by now because it's been the official releases was out late last week um, so pretty much everyone knows about it by now um, speaking of releases brick model railroader has come out with a new drift of releases um, so you've got your covered hopper you've got your Gunderson high cube boxcar and you've also got uh, Kale's uh, Slash 9 or Dash 9 Reefer. Um, I've ordered both the cover topper and the Reefer, and I've ordered three decal sets for each. That set me back almost $200, including postage. Uh, not very good on the wallet, but uh, it will certainly keep me busy. Um, and those are in a wide variety of releases. The ones I really like are the uh, uh, Bangor and the Roostock uh, main potatoes. And you've also got the uh, Wilson's Milk. That's quite a nice one. Um, and I also like the Sioux Line one. And I've actually started ordering pieces for the Sioux Line one now. Because I know that dark red in certain of the pieces they want is a very rare colour. Um, so I have um, 32, I think, of the um, hand bits on order. So sort of like what we use on the hammer. So the 1x2 mod wire plate with bar closed ends, I think it is, or something like that. Um, I've got 32 of those on order, possibly 33, I think somebody had one or two, so there's probably a bit more than what's required, and that's some guesswork on the model. Um, and I've got some other of the dark red pieces, such as the tiles, and a few other bits and pieces. Obviously I don't think Europe's going to be drained of the uh, dark red for the hopper, um, obviously because it's a bit of a more of a rarer colour. Um, and it's more of an, and obviously it's an American model rather than a European one, so obviously it's probably going to be less well known. Um, but nonetheless, I have started ordering bits and pieces for these models purely on the basis that even if not many people actually buy these things, some of the pieces that they use are rare or are otherwise limited in availability. Um, so, so say like the I don't know, the dark blue one by 2 tar, for example, had to order a load of those. Um, a lot of these part orders aren't from one supplier. These are from two, three, possibly four or five. Um, so I've had to really break it down into quite a lot of small orders. Um, as far as I'm aware, pretty much all of them have been dispatched. Um, I think I've pretty much had all the... Uh, I've had all the UK orders except for one placed about three days ago, which, to answer with the 
pre-COVID possibly would have arrived within the three days uh, if a shipper had sent it on the day I ordered it. But as far as I'm concerned, it's ordered, it's in the post, it should be here at some point. Um, there's quite a few European orders on their way, again, to do with these new BMR releases. Um, so hopefully they're going to be here within the next week to two weeks. Um, so obviously they'll, then they can go in there or behind me or wherever they need to go, um, ready for when these uh, releases come out. Um, ideas. Ideas is something else that has come out today. So this is very fresh news, very much hot off the press. Um They've announced the latest ideas uh, review period uh, announcements. So obviously we have the Home Alone house, uh, or the McAllister house, depending on what you want to call it. We're also getting the typewriter, and we're also getting the Seinfeld set, I think it is. Um, they're not ones I'm particularly familiar with. I, mean, I have heard of them, obviously. Um, but they're not really things I was hoping for out of this release. Uh, this idea's uh, draft also had the Toronto Transit Train. Um, obviously, that was very much a rank outsider. It's been, I think, the third or fourth trains-related ideas proposal that's gone to 10k. So you've had the vintage tram. I think you've had a, an industrial park or chemical plant something along those lines that reach 10k you've had the modular train station and now you've had the Tr toronto transit train so you've obviously had four idea sets of or proposals that have gone to 10k and been told no um obviously this is a in some respects a really good thing though because it means that people do want trains so maybe this is a good sort of reaffirmation from the community that trains will do well and that we do want trains but lego isn't doing enough of them to actually make it worthwhile whether that's taken on board or not i'm not entirely sure but and ten thousand really really isn't that good of a value set i want to say um obviously statistics to this statisticians will tell you that ten thousand generally speaking, is a good number of wants, but also then you're talking about 10,000 compared to Lego's entire um, market. And obviously you've got to compare the 10K over time. So obviously some of these ideas, trains ones particularly, take a very long time to get to their 10K. Within the time limit, don't get me wrong, but compared to others such as, say, Zelda, um, or some of the more common ones which seem to crop up on ideas, do seem to take a bit longer to get that uh, to that 10k. Um, it's a bit of a disappointment with what's come uh, out from my ideas. Personally, I would have liked to have bought the fish tank. Um, I think that was a really nice difference. It's something mechanical. It's not a comedy set. I mean, we've had Big Bang Theory and F and Friends wasn't from ideas, but was very much in that sort of display vignette sort of style um so obviously you've got getting that again with seinfeld and possibly something very similar again with home alone it's not something that particularly interests me if they were at a reasonable price point they might make it worthwhile to buy to detail modular buildings for example or that sort of thing to actually buy to convert into those sorts of things but you know they don't really at a price point per piece don't really make that good an argument from that perspective um the next set of ideas releases again contains a trains uh, item this is the queen's train which has been mentioned on the lnur podcast um or lnur line uh, as it's called um and i am your producer for that um episode three and i'll i mean nice uh change over there uh, episode three is actually being edited right now um so the audio is all done it's all been saved um it's gone out to peer review from the uh, lnur team or lnur community sort of like the internal lnur members um feedback generally has been good um there's been one or two things picked up which i'm not going to fix chris so but um that that's generally okay um, from a girl's map the video needs editing um hopefully that will get done within the next couple of days and then it can then go up on the uh, lnur channel for a quick uh, review uh, just to make sure i've um caught everything 
and then also then going to be published. So hopefully, a podcast will be with you within the next couple of days. So there's a little tidbit for you for those who uh, don't uh, wondering where I've gone to. Um, and speaking of LNUR. Uh, segueing into this um, there's also the Brick Train Awards now these are a joint thing between LNUR and Brick Model Railroader um, obviously this is really new grounds um, for the community, this is something global as well and we're encompassing everywhere so this is not just a European or American thing LNUR and um, Brick Model Railroader are the main participants but this is a whole community effort. We've got uh, quite a few notable builders on the judging panel and assisting with this and doing some recommendations and that sort of stuff. Obviously, I'm not involved beyond. I wasn't not involved beyond the video and beyond the LNUR part. Um, so obviously, I was the the uh, video recorder for the uh, interview between uh, me, Richard, and Kyle Lee part of uh, Brickmill Road. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, I've got a few pieces I'm working on which are going to get submitted um, but other than that it's very much um, interesting and seeing what plays out I think the final submission date is the 10th of July so obviously I wait that with much trepidation and hope I can get the models complete, complete by then moving on to things that aren't announcements or competitions or releases um, Johnny D um, those of you who've watched previous vlogs will know that I build Johnny D vehicles. Johnny D is a designer that you can find on Instagram and posts his builds to Rebrickable where they cost about four euros. Um, personally, that four euros, I believe, is a very worthwhile investment for some very nice vehicles that look very much like the real thing. And the two newest ones are the 1934 International Harvester two-ton flatbed and I actually do have a copy here. Uh, this is your uh, red and dark bluish grey model, um, which I thought was quite nice. It's quite a bit different. Um, it's not complete yet. There is one piece, I think, that needs changing, um, and then other than that, it is complete. So this is pretty much complete. The only thing really missing from this is license plates, um, but other than that, it should be okay. Um, the other model is the 1930 Duesenberg Model J convertible sedan. Here it is. Uh, this is, again is almost complete, um, but this has got a, quite a few more parts that need swapping out. Um, partially because it uses dark red, and uh, partially because I just don't have the parts because they've been used in other things. Um, these should already be on the Johnny D list on my Facebook page. Um, so if you haven't checked them out now, that lists everything I'm building um, in terms of Johnny D models and their status. So obviously, you know, please check on that. Um, I um, previously mentioned Brick Model Router and their new releases. Um, with regards to models I've currently got in the can, um, I have actually I do have some off camera I've been working on. Um, a lot of those, it's pretty much just like the bogey detailing and brake piping that needed finishing off. Um, so some of that's actually been done on some of the hoppers. A lot of the hoppers were missing some of that detailing. So that's now been done on quite a good chunk of them. I've done the one of the outstanding flat cars, so that's had all that done. Um, that's just got to have the brake wheel fitted and then that's all done um, and then that just needs lettering I've done lettering on another one which was missing it which I think might have been um, the Delaware and Lackawanna um, which is a black hopper um, that's somewhere here in the room don't know where uh, possibly in one of the actually might be in one of the really useful boxes um, but again that's one that I'd decals applied and that's pretty much done at this point um, and it's literally just been little bits and pieces in the background that I've been working on uh, to get stuff done because um, Brick Model Railroad and stuff a lot, I've got quite a lot of it in various stages most of it is pretty much complete or all complete but also there are little bits like these hoppers um, flat cars and other bits and pieces where they're 90% 95% done but it's just the things such as the brake piping or this or that that needs doing. But once that's been done, they're complete and need to go into storage for whenever we do actually get uh, some exhibitions going as they can get shown off. Um, speaking of exhibitions, um, I've not made any pr real progress with the exhibition layout. Um, I do have some modules set up over here on my sort of like test bench or demo bench or workspace or whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, so they're ones that are pretty much done. Um, they're there effectively for storage um, because there's really nowhere else for them at the moment. So I do need to get storage sorted for those. I do have some ideas and I do have some really useful boxes in stock. Again, it's just time and sorting through them, sort of going, this one's done, this one's not, and just progressing through that way and seeing what does and doesn't need work. Um, now, another aspect uh, that I've been working on um, that I probably haven't covered recently has been locos. And obviously, those of you following me on Instagram will have seen at least one of these. Now, I am working on a couple of things. The big announcement being that I'm now working on my Octrainber 2018 entry and actually converting that from a digital model into the brick. Now, that was a new... Uh, New York, New Haven, and Hartford Y three O eight A switcher. Um, some of the you might know it better off as being a USRA uh, switcher, which is again an O eight O. And eventually, the New Haven built copies of the USRA design uh, with some tweaks. Um, so I've pretty much been working on the tender for now because um, that's one of the easiest parts because I don't need any special wheels I don't need any special connecting rods or anything like that um, I have ordered some uh, trained bricks parts for it um, so they are in the post um, but I do need to work on other bits and pieces before then um, such as the chassis to get it a rolling chassis um, I do have some uh, Big Ben bricks wheels on order so hopefully they can arrive reasonably soon holding no hopes that because obviously the postage system is a bit skewed at the uh, at the moment um, there's all this covid issue so obviously that will be delayed and obviously that has other kinks in the issue as well so there's obviously delays from other bits and pieces obviously everything's running slower everything has been inspected slower shipping is slower um also there's delays like that i will show off and it is has a little bit of work done. Uh, this is the uh, BNO Dockside Switcher. So this was actually revealed on Instagram, I believe, a week ago. Um, so this has actually had a lot of work done to it since then, mostly in parts replacement. Um, there's a lot of dust work to be done around the, chi uh, the cylinders. Um, other than that, it's a pretty good model. I've put in some imitation va uh, valve gear today. Um, which does work quite well. I've had this on top speed, so this does work well. Um, obviously, you can sort of see the power functions uh, there. So obviously this is power function powered. I do want to try and convert this into standard uh, a power function motor and gearing, uh, so that it runs a bit slower. But for now, it actually isn't too bad, um, and it does seem to be work quite well. I have basically built this off some instructions I bought off Bricklink a very long time ago, several years ago now, and I have made some modifications so for example the steps on this side are different, you actually have your uh, cut out of the tank here uh, that's rather important uh, you have your cab uh, cut out here for the uh, air pump uh, for the brakes, uh, from what I can gather uh, this bit here where this, the cut out should have some piping in I'm probably not going to simulate that because of there's no fixture points except for if I did it via the uh, cab front um, so that's obviously a bit difficult um, other than that it's been progressing quite well it's mostly just parts replacement at this point and finishing off the cab cab is the worst aspect of it because obviously I've got to work out how to do the cab so it's got this nice um, finish to the bunker and then so it uh, connects into the top here and then I've got to work out the rear light I'd like to fit a light to it at some, of some description, um, so I'm probably going to aim for a front headlight um, and leave the back one just as a dummy um, to do a working backup and a working headlight would possibly require a bit more effort than I'd like to put in. Um, it's possibly very doable with some Lego lighting, um, but again that requires a lot of uh, effort and some tweaking, so I'm probably going to leave that for now. Um, and it's actually got quite good because you actually have an on off function um, with this uh, dome here so you can actually toggle this on and off it was actually part of the original instructions for this model so it does make it quite an interesting uh, piece so I know that what you can see um, so that's it uh, that's the whistle stop tour over with 
Um, so obviously there's been quite a lot of stuff to go through. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to comment or you know if you want to do it privately, I will do that. Um, if you want any more information, um, I will possibly be working on a website. I do want to go out and get some advice, should we say, um, before I do actually, do actually go any further. Um, so that's possibly something where you might see a bit more information put up. Uh, but that's it for now. And uh, obviously I'll uh, see you in a video coming up soon. Alternatively, you'll be listening to me on the LNUR podcast. Uh, so that's it from me and see you later.